And this Western Cape People's Bill, which is going to be tabled very, very shortly, is going, is going to turn the South African constitutional order on its head. Uh, and that is going to really, that probably is going to be the bubble that bursts everything. People are going to have to pick sides. It's going to be on the, on the parliamentary record. And that's going to produce a discussion because fundamentally that's about uh, self-determination. It's not a Cape Independence Bill. It's a self-determination bill. But it's a bill that says the people of the Western Cape exist as a group, the Western Cape people. And if anyone doubts that, they can go, the Western Cape is the only uh, province with a constitution. The first words of the Western Cape constitution say, in humble, a humble submission to Almighty God, we, the people of the Western Cape. Phil Craig is the spokesman of the Cape Independence Advocacy Group. We've been following the story about Cape Independence uh, very closely over the last four years now. And uh, I've got more of a vested interest today, living in the same part of the world as 129,000 other South Africans decided to do last year, semigrate to the Cape. Uh, I wonder if Phil's going to be able to give us some uh, insights on progress towards what he wants, which is independence. Okay, Phil, so now I've uh, put my cards on the table. Uh, I'm very much here a citizen of your province or your area and uh, it was interesting talking with the premier last week alan windy i asked him about cape independence and he remains strongly against he uh, says that federalism is a better op option and then over the weekend i had an email from a community member of ours who took a lot of time and trouble and effort to explain why he's now abandoned the Democratic Alliance, his political home for many, many years. Uh, and he says it, it rests firmly on the, his belief that independence, not devolution, is the right option. So I thought it was a good idea on both of those scores to catch up with you and, and see. We haven't spoken for a few months to see exactly where the independence lobby is going, if anywhere. Oh, well, fantastic. It's always great to, to be with you and to be on the program. Uh, and uh, I'm pleased to report that we're making fantastic progress uh, you know, towards uh, towards that Cape independence, at least in the in the broader sense of the of, of the word. Um, I did catch your uh, your discussion with Alan, and and um, yeah, you know, sometimes I, I I find Alan quite frustrating when he talks on Cape independence. He's not terribly well informed, and uh, you know that unfortunately perhaps not a fair thing to say about the Premier, but it, unfortunately it's the reality. He tends to talk about Cape independence in in, in one to one situations. He's avoided. Uh, all debates and public discussions. So he tends to say things that sometimes just aren't true, and I, and I accept that's probably from a, a position of ignorance. And a, you know, a good example would be he addressed the, um, the the provincial parliament at the end of last year, and he, and he said that if he called a referendum on Cape independence, everybody in South Africa would have to vote. Um, you know, and I just wanted to sort of you know, shout to the screen to say, Alan, you know, please just tell us. You know, there's been something like 35 independence referendums held around the world in the last three decades. Please show us one single example where a whole country got to vote uh, on, on, on a region wanting independence. And these are the sort of comments that unfortunately Alan is, is given to, to making and then sort of avoids being able to, to sort of to stand up for those comments in, in a debate. Um, but look, let's put that to, to, to one side. I think uh, it's interesting that, that, that you sort of pick up this thing in terms of federalism. And I think that an argument, you know, I think federalism has been offered by many people uh, as, a, as a compromise position from, from for Cape independence. Um, and whilst we don't think federalism is the ultimate answer, I think we've always had the same position, which is, well, look, yeah, if the, if the Democratic Alliance or other people think federalism is the solution, then ask for it and push it and pursue federalism. Uh, yeah, it's no good offering federalism and then not actually do anything about getting it. And, and interestingly, you say, look, what's been happening with us? And I think, yeah, in some ways, the CIAG, we're now three years old. Uh, we're into the sort of second chapter of our movement. In the first chapter, you know, it was really about establishing Cape independence as a political option. Uh, yeah, at the start, nobody really had heard about Cape Independence. None of the political parties really had a, had a view on it. Uh, and for the first 18 months, our mission as an organisation was just to place Cape Independence on the agenda, to force political parties to engage with the subject, to establish it as a political option. And obviously, we've been very, very successful at doing that. And now all of the political parties are consistently asked about Cape Independence, and we all understand it's an option. And that kind of led us into our second chapter. And our second chapter then really is we don't want to talk about Cape Independence. We, we want to get on and deliver Cape Independence. We want to, yeah, and I say Cape Independence in the broader sense, we want to establish 
a future uh, for, for, for ourselves and our families and our compatriots. We recognize the group of people, a sizable group of people in South Africa, maybe 20 million strong, who kind of have this Western first world values. They want to be governed in a particular way. They're voting for that and they want to be able to have a future on, on the southern tip of Africa. And that's what we're fighting for. And because those people form a, an ideological majority in the Western Cape, uh, then, then that's obviously a logical place to, 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 to have that fight from. Um, so what, what we've done really in the second chapter is then pull together all of the people. And ironically, the Democratic Alliance is not very far away from us um, in so much as um, if we think in terms of the concept of the right of self-determination, which is the heart of, of, of Cape independence, the right of people to make decisions for themselves and in the Western Cape to be able to, for the people who live here to decide how and by, and by whom we're governed and not to always be dictated to from a government in Pretoria that we didn't vote for and we fundamentally disagree with. And if we think of the DA's own policies, first of all, they're pushing for devolution. They, they want to take power away from that government in Pretoria, and they want to deliver it to the people of the Western Cape, which is exactly what we do. And then, and actually they've pushed for that, but they haven't been very successful at delivering devolution, and we can talk about that if you want. Um, then the, the, and actually we've, we've helped them. We've, you know, we've come along, we've, it was the CIG who were the instigator behind the Western Cape Devolution Working Group. We've taken hands with them. We said, look, if you want to deliver devolution, great, we will help you. We're not going to fight you, we're going to help you. Uh, when it comes to, 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 to federalism, federalism is a formal policy of the DA. They never actually tried to get federalism, but it's a formal policy. As we sit and speak now here, the CIAG is writing a Western Cape federal autonomy bill that we asked to be paid for. So again, we don't necessarily think that federalism is the final answer, um, but actually if the DA wants to bring federalism, we're helping them, we're going to write the bill, because they're not going to write the bill, because they don't really want federalism, but let's, let's get there and, and, and push that. So fundamentally, you know, we're saying, let's get this trade moving. Let's get power away from Pretoria and to the people of the Western Cape. Um, and actually, let's use all means to do that. And actually, if you look at the, what the United Nations say, what are the forms of self-determination? There's three forms of self-determination that are applicable to us. Devolution or autonomy, it's DA policy. Federalism, it's DA policy. And then you've got independence, which isn't DA policy. And they're the three forms of self-determination. And we have uh, written this year, we have actually spent the last year lobbying the major political parties around something called the Western Cape People's Bill. Um, the Western Cape People's Bill is a piece of provincial legislation. It's written. It's going to be tabled very, very shortly in the provincial parliament. And it will allow the Western Cape to claim devolution by right and not by request. It will allow the Western Cape to claim federal autonomy by right and by not request. Um, and ultimately down the line, should the people of the Western Cape want independence, it will allow them to claim independence. But it's a critical piece of legislation. It's provincial legislation, so the ANC and the EFF can't block it, and it can be passed before 2024. So when we go into 2024, we need to have this legislation passed to the provincial assembly. So if we do end up with an ANC EFF go uh, coalition government, which John Dean Hazen was rightly alluding to, and the dangers that went there with, then the Western Cape can be protected from that national government. And then not just the Western Cape, other provinces reject the ANC and EOF national government. They also can follow this same process and we can have a Gauteng People's Bill, KZN People's Bill or whatever else. So we've really been both available in this lobbying space and in this legislative space. We've got this Western Cape People's Bill, which is about to be tabled, We're busy with the federalism bill because we want to move this debate on. And we know let's all just move towards disempowering this national government and we'll end up at independence if that's the place where we're going to end up. And obviously that's our first choice. It's interesting that you say that you want the bill to go through before 2024, because as things stand right now, one of your biggest critics or one of the biggest internal problems, obstacles, is the Patriotic Alliance. And we saw in the recent Swellendam election, by-election, that the Patriotic Alliance is really gaining a lot of momentum. They hold more vo votes than the DA in a DA ward splitting the votes of the ANC actually came in. Rob Hersoff, uh, who's a big supporter of Gaten McKenzie, the leader of the Patriotic Alliance, says that if you want to have a chance of getting Cape independence at some point in time, and he even said Gaten would, might even be the first president of the Free Cape, uh, he, he, he said, you've got to change his mind. Have you been lobbying him well, look, I and his party? I have spoken to, to Gayton once, and and uh, you know, to be honest, I I had a had a brief conversation with him on on the phone. I I agreed that we would speak again. 
uh, and actually we never spoke again in the end he just then published some media articles <laughs> calling me racist and actually at this point in time uh, you know he has has not really engaged in good faith um but i think look there are other people i think uh, for example um Cornel Mulder at the freedom front plus has a fairly decent relationship i think with uh, with 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 gate and so so there is lobbying going on and and look clearly you yeah, know the western cape uh, you know I mean, the west the western cape independence is about all of the people of the western cape yeah, the majority of cape independent supporters uh, are colored um and uh, you know clearly that's a critical uh, you know, a critical part of the, of of the of the process and um, we must remember that you know whilst that whilst gate has made some some uh, progress particularly in the rural western cape you know, the vast majority of the people of the of the, of, of the western cape or colored people of the western cape are still voting da and the, i think there is some shift going on there and i think that shift is going on probably because the da is not pursuing radical enough solutions we're really not doing its best to protect the people of the western cape but you can't phil you can't ignore the role that the patriotic alliance is playing and although the anc and eff are below 25 percent in the western cape Bring in the Patriotic Alliance and the gains they're making, and they'll be above 25%. And uh, that might make it difficult for anybody to get a referendum through. There's, there's all kinds of political undertones to this, and that's really what I'm trying to get at. Freedom Front in the 2021 election said they support Western Cape independence. Presumably they still do. So you got them on side. They would be eating away to um, if the DA keeps its current uh, position. You've got Gaten McKenzie who'd be eating away on the other side. It looks like a, a little bit of a scrambled egg. So, so perversely, um, you know, uh, this thing can work out many different ways. And whilst the DA are adamantly opposed to uh, to Cape independence, which at this point they are, uh, then then you know an outright majority for the DA isn't necessarily in the best interests of Cape independence. Um, you know, were, were the were the DA to end up in a coalition government with the Freedom Front Plus, for argument's sake, and, and perhaps the Cape Independence Party, uh, then uh, then perhaps we would be in a much stronger position to 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 press uh, for for Cape Independence. Because one of the frustrations with the, with the DA is, whilst they've publicly and repeatedly said they support the right of the people of the Western Cape to make the decision for themselves, uh, they've spectacularly failed to allow them to give that. In, in fact, they've stalled their own legislation. You know, they announced they were going to bring the referendum legislation two years ago. Uh, they've consistently repeating given us assurances that it's about just about to be tabled but here we are two years later and it still hasn't been tabled um, and actually why well look i think you'd have to ask that ask the da that uh, look you, you, yeah we are yeah we are privileged to certain bits of information that sort of people pass our way and so on and, and i do know the answer to that and the answer to that is that the, is that the da is scared of a brexit scenario and and and, and yeah and and and, and yeah that is absolutely okay. the case. But why would the DA be scared of a Brexit scenario, given all of what we hear about the success of the Western Cape and the fact that it's creating most of the jobs, virtually all of the jobs being created in South Africa? It's a success story that you would assume uh, would would make them even more powerful if they were to be able to lead here. They could offer other parts of the country that they could do the same for it. Look, I, you, you, and 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 I would be completely aligned with you on that, and that certainly would be my view too. Uh, I think when you talk to people in the DA, I think they're very the, the DA, like a typical organisation, is you know, is not particularly good when it gets to the sort of the, the fringes and radical policy, and is super cautious. I think they're conscious that seventy percent of their voters are located outside of the Western Cape, and I think they really worry about how this issue will play out nationally. And one of the things, ironically, we've pushed them on is to say, well, why don't you go and poll that nationally? Because all of our anecdotal evidence says there's really strong support for Cape independence outside of the Western Cape. And I know Franz Cronier has done some polling. I've tried to get my hands on it, but I haven't. But I do know uh, that, that, that that information is quite explosive, uh, that, it's, that, it's, that it suggests there's really strong support for independence outside of the Western Cape. And I know that the DA had seen that data. Um, so the DA have the data. They understand what's going to what, what we are, what's likely to happen, and and you know, whether it's an ideological issue, whether it's just a step too far and they're uncomfortable with it, you know, that's the, you know, that, that I can't. But that's their decision. Obviously, from that, from our point of view, we would love to love to see them, um, you know, pursuing Cape independence. But actually, we've never really pushed the DA to support Cape independence outright. We've always said, look, as a democratic organisation, just allow the people of the Western Cape to speak for themselves. Call the referendum, let people speak for themselves. And actually, in the interim, your policy is federalism. So go and ask for it. You know, if, if you if you're there's the best two things we can do. And in fact, you know, 
one of the one of the possibilities that we've discussed with the with the DA is why don't you call a referendum that does both? Why do you have a referendum that that that, that, that asks about federal autonomy? Uh, and and if the if the national government isn't willing to provide federal autonomy, then ask people about Cape independence. And that would be a sensible. I mean, you know, we, we want to find ways of moving forward. Uh, and I think the DA does need to be much much braver. And I think yeah, we saw this with with John's re-election. We were delighted that, yeah, that John and Helen were both re-elected. I think that's yeah, that's good for the DA and good for South Africa. Um, but I mean, you know, frankly, if you're, if you're the opposition party and you have to describe your strategy as a moonshot, you know, which is a euphemism for a Hail Mary, that's not a great plan, is it? And, I, and, and you know, the, the bizarre thing with the DA is they fundamentally support taking power away from Pretoria and to the provinces. So what, you know, the logical solution for 2024 is to empower the people who aren't voting for an ANC EFF national coalition government power the Western Cape and exactly as you say offer that possibility to other provinces if they're going to reject the ANC and the EFF too. Phil from where you are sitting are you seeing that there's a groundswell that is growing and I ask this because I've been approached by numerous people who don't want to stick their head above the parapet in the way that you have for reasons best known to themselves But there's a lot of work that seems to be going on. It's almost like there's an enormous amount in the background on this whole lobbying for Cape independence, which hasn't really surfaced yet. And if you, the question you said earlier, if you ask the people in South Africa whether they would support a place like the Cape going independent, they're already voting with their feet. 129,000 people who came to this province from elsewhere and secondly, there's nothing wrong with having a plan B that doesn't mean you have to emigrate. So surely it, it, it makes sense that if you were to ask someone in Johannesburg or in, in KZN if they would support the Cape getting its own independence, it, it's just rational that they would say, yes, they would do so. But my question to you is, what is, is there anything you can tell us about what's actually happening outside of this, of the public spotlight, because not a heck of a lot, apart from you, is happening in that. Sure. No, look, and, and, and Cape Independence is a radical solution. I think in the first instance, so, 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 yeah, we planted that seed, and, and you're quite right, absolutely, that seed has germinated. And I think you know, in South Africa, you have we have two issues we deal with. One is apathy that people just don't believe it's possible, so therefore they they, they don't want to put the head above the parapet, and they're scared of of. of of looking foolish, uh, but absolutely privately they endorse it, and I think that goes right through. I mean, that goes right through government. That goes through the, the main political parties. You know, yeah, there are a vast number of people in the DA who, of course, support Cape Independence and um, you know, whatever they may say publicly in many other organisations. And then I think there's a lot of business people who would love to get more involved in Cape Independence, but they but they're scared of, of the business costs uh, in terms of doing that because they're doing a lot of business with with government. Um, so I think it is frustrating, and I, you know, we absolutely share that frustration. But privately, I mean, there is absolutely massive progress. I mean, you know, and I think one of you know, this this move to say, look, let's let's forget about the absolutes in the end. Let's get together the people that that, that support devolution, and the people that support federalism, and the people that support fin- that Cape independence, and let's just start getting power away from Pretoria, and let's get the train rolling out the station. And that was the devolution working group that's still going on, very strong. It's a very very you, know, you haven't seen much about that. Um, but that is very, very much going on. Um, and this Western Cape People's Bill, which is going to be tabled very, very shortly, is going to, is going to turn the South African constitutional order on its head. Uh, and that is going to really, that probably is going to be the bubble that bursts everything. People are going to have to pick sides. It's going to be on the, on the parliamentary record. And that's going to produce a discussion because fundamentally that's about uh, self-determination. It's not a Cape Independence Bill. It's a self-determination bill. But it's a bill that says the people of the Western Cape exist as a group, the Western Cape people. And if anyone doubts that, they can go. The Western Cape is the only uh, province with a constitution. The first words of the Western Cape Constitution say, "In humble, admi- a humble submission to Almighty God, we, the people of the Western Cape." And then you have all these international charters, which South Africa has signed post 1994, which guarantee that all people, including the Western Cape people, have a right to self determination. It's just never been claimed. And the Western Cape People's Bill, all it will do is a very simple bill. It says the Western Cape people exist, and because they exist, they have a right to self-determination. And the United Nations says self-determination can be exercised in the form of devolution or federalism and, or independence. And actually, in that scenario, we do not need the South African government's permission. 
We, yeah, yeah, we have an absolute right now. We'll have to go to Parliament and the Federal Autonomy Bill will do that. We'll have to go to the Constitutional Court and say, well, hang on a second, Parliament may be denied us federal autonomy in the Western Cape or independence. But actually, here's, here's this bill that we've passed. Here's what international law says. Here's what the South African Constitution says about self-determination international law. The people of the Western Cape have a right to make decisions for themselves and we are now going to exercise that right. And Western Cape people can decide for themselves in what form they want to exercise that right. That's not our choice. But actually, before 2024, the people of the Western Cape can and must have claimed self-determination. It doesn't matter who the national government is in post-2024 because the Western Cape people have a right to make decisions for themselves. But if the DA is so camped against this, this whole idea, and they are the majority party in the Western Cape government, why would they vote for a bill like this? Well, so so we, we don't, at this point in time, we're, we're still, you know, we've, we've been lobbying the DA for a year on this bill. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've had endless conversations. And, the, you know, the, obviously they must speak for themselves in the bill. But I don't think they fundamentally are opposed to this bill. I think, you know, what it's exposed is a whole load of language. So the issue around this bill isn't, isn't you know, the, the devolution is DA policy. Federalism is DA policy. Uh, so obviously, there's no, why would they not want a bill that allowed them uh, to enact their own policy? So I think actually ideologically, uh, or, or you know, it, uh, in principle, there's a lot of support within the DA for this bill. Uh, and, 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 I, and I still believe that we'll get this bill passed. Uh, what we find where we are now and the reason the bill hasn't come quicker and, the re and, and, and even as we speak now, we, we, we're, still, we're still discussing these points because it throws up a whole load of different ideological arguments about who the Western Cape people are. So the DA find it very easy to accept that the Western Cape people are ideologically distinct from the rest of South Africa, uh, but they find it quite difficult to acknowledge the, the, the correlation between demographics because the DA is a liberal party and it doesn't really subscribe to group rights. It's very focused on individual rights. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, so, so yeah, there are a lot of very uncomfortable things it's going to have to deal with. And, and that's just the reality. I think the DA, in many ways, has acted as if it can pick up what it's done in the Western Cape and transplant that into the rest of South Africa. Because if it works in the Western Cape, it'll work in the rest of South Africa. We've seen, well, that's, bottom yeah. line it, bottom line it for us. Is this bull, you, you, you're very confident that this bull is going to go forward. Is it your, what's your plan B if it isn't? taken forward by the DA, or perhaps differently, how confident are you that it will be presented to the Western Cape Parliament? Because it seems like uh, the, the your trump card. Well, I'm 100% certain it's going to be presented to the Western Cape Parliament, uh, and, and, and I, there's a high degree of probability that the, the DA will, will, will support it in one form or another. Um, and uh, yeah, I suspect they may make changes to the, to the bill to get it into a form of language that's comfortable with them, and we've encouraged them to do that. In fact, we've spent a year saying to them, look, come, change this bill, get this bill in a format that you're happy with. But actually, what we've seen with the DA time and time again is they'll just stall and stall and stall until eventually you push the issue. So the issue now is to table this bill and then and then let the, the DA deal with this bill in Parliament and then they can make their changes. We go, we absolutely all we want to do is say the Western Cape people exist. How can you argue with that? It's in the Constitution. Uh, and, the, and we want to write to make decisions for ourselves, which is their policy. So I'm convinced uh, I think there's a high degree of possibility that this bill will be passed before 2024. I don't know what it's going to look like because I think the DA are going to make changes to the bill and we're happy with that as long as we get this bill passed. Paul Craig is the spokesman of the Cape Independence Advocacy Group, which has been at it for the last three years. We've been talking to you for a little <laughs> bit longer than that as well. Uh, and uh, thanks for the update, Phil. I'm Alec Hogg from biznews.com.